Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is August 21st, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, what I'm gonna do is, is talk a bit about the necessary response to human-caused climate change. And I think we should all admit at this point that we are in a climate crisis and we need to rapidly respond in order to prevent catastrophic impacts from climate change. We're already in a, a dangerous level of warming. The, the level of warming between one degree Celsius and two degrees Celsius above 1880s averages has been identified as sci by scientists as a dangerous range. And, and we are already in a, a dangerous range. Now, as you get further along into that range, as you get above 1.5 degrees Celsius and closer to two degrees Celsius warming, you start to see some potential or, or increased potential for catastrophic impacts. And the issue with catastrophic impacts is you, you don't want to see catastrophic impacts. Catastrophic impacts are, are impacts that human civilization will have a great deal of difficulty dealing with. If you get above two degrees Celsius, you're, you're in an extremely dangerous range. And if you get above three degrees Celsius, you're, you're looking at impacts that are, that are completely unprecedented for, for human civilizations. And if you get up to four degrees Celsius, you have a high likelihood that more than half of global civilizations will enter a, a collapse kind of state. So, so climate change is, is a real issue. It's a real issue now. We're seeing increased damage from climate change right now. Climate change is dangerous now. And we need to work as hard as we can to respond to climate change. Now, what I'm gonna talk about in this segment is what is the most effective response to human-caused climate change? And in a word, or in a few words, it is reducing carbon emissions. So reducing carbon emissions reduces the driver of present climate change. It removes the accelerant toward tipping points and I'm going to talk a little bit about that later. And it also provides us with the opportunity to reinvigorate certain earth system carbon removal processes such as forests and rainforests and soils to give us a bit of an edge in dealing with climate change. Now, there are other responses to human-caused climate change. I'm going to talk about those responses later. They are less effective. Now, how do you reduce global carbon emissions? First off, you stop burning fossil fuel. And the most effective ways of doing that are re increasing efficiency and by replacing fossil fuel burning directly with renewable energy. Renewable energy itself is, in my opinion, the key aspect of dealing with the climate crisis, both because renewable energy systems are more efficient than fossil fuel-based systems, and that efficiency itself is generates a synergy with renewable energy. Renewable energy systems themselves increase efficiency and encourage in efficiency. So, in a few words, the clean energy transition hits the center of gravity of human-caused climate change. And if you link the clean energy transition with economies of scale, as we have with wind, solar, and electrical vehicles, then you can have an escalating response. Now, there are other responses as well that are good, hard responses, such as bans on fossil fuel emitting cars or coal plants or various forms of, of high emission extraction processes like fracking or tar sands, all of those responses are positive. 
But what works best is a combination of, of removing sources of carbon from the global economic system and providing alternatives for those sources of carbon that are both clean and high efficiency. If you do that, then what you end up is a peak with is a peak in emissions. And what we want to do if we're going to respond to climate change well is peak emissions as rapidly as possible. The earlier we peak emissions, the better off we are. The faster we reduce emissions following the peak in emissions, the better off we are. Now, there's been a lot of talk about how rapidly the global economy can adjust to a reduction in carbon emissions. And it's my opinion that this, this talk is, is a bit too much on the alarmist side. In my opinion, once energy systems switch, they tend to switch. Yes, you do have an issue of stranded assets and that hurts the people who held on to those stranded, stranded assets. And you do have an issue of, of a like a bubble, like a carbon bubble. And it does hurt the people that, that hold on to fossil fuels as an investment. But the economic system itself is much more resilient to, to change of an energy system than the global environment is to the various worsening impacts of a carbon, uh, I'm sorry, of a climate crisis and a and dangerous global warming. So economic systems have gone through boom and bust cycles before, and, and we have survived those. But, but we've never seen an existential climate crisis, and we don't want to. So, so just a word about the, the fear-mongering surrounding the notion of very rapidly transitioning. In my opinion, they tend to be overblown. So the primary issues are mostly related with fossil fuel burning. Most of carbon dioxide comes from fossil fuel burning. Most of the overburden of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere as well as the present high level of carbon dioxide emission comes from fossil fuel burning. In addition, a good chunk of methane comes from processes related to fossil fuel extraction and fossil fuel burning. The rest come from land use. We'll talk a little bit about land use later. In N2O is is it a a pollutant that results in global that that helps to warm the Earth's atmosphere, but in addition, it is mostly the result of burning fossil fuels. Chlorofluorocarbon, greenhouse gas trapping. Uh, uh, greenhouse gas based substances can be managed through industry and and caps on use and working to reduce their use and a number of the 15 other minor heat trapping gases can also be managed through regulation of industry but the primary issue is fossil fuel burning which deals with the majority of the present greenhouse gas emission now, in addition to that, changes in land use can pull down a degree of carbon from the Earth's atmosphere, changing forests and farms from carbon sources into carbon sinks. However, the potential for use of the environment in this way is limited, and it's limited by how soon we hit tipping points for carbon feedbacks. Now already the tropical environment right now, tropical forests, emit more carbon than they take in. And that's, in, that's primarily due to warming of the tropics and due to destruction of tropical rainforests. Other systems right now are in the process of, of possibly tipping over and so if we limit warming, we can perhaps save these regions. But if we don't, we're in trouble. So something to think about. Thank you for joining me.